Many Florida beaches boast of their soft, white sugar sand. However, this shoreline has become the world's most famous beach because of the hardness of its sand. Long before there were paved roads, the pioneers of automobiles had a need for speed and began racing in Ormond Beach, eventually under the Main Street Pier in a long present-day Ponce Inlet. Today, Daytona Beach is home to the Super Bowl of stock car racing, holds the second largest bike rally in the nation, as well as some of the largest car shows in the Southeast, and one of the most popular spring break destinations in Florida. If you are not into the large crowd festivals, parties, but more into nature, Daytona has something for you as well. In this video, we'll show the Daytona coastal region beginning at New Smyrna Beach in Sand Dunes Park. Then explore the scenic Ponce Inlet. Cruise up the Halifax River. Take a stroll along the boardwalk. Drive along the Intracoastal Waterway in the Daytona Beach Historic District. Then north to Ormond Beach and ending at Tomoka State Park. We will give you tips on dining and lodging and what to do on your Daytona getaway. Well, we have a lot to show you. 23 miles of the fun coast. So ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. I saved a chair for you. It's time to explore the Daytona Beach coastal region. We begin our journey with a gorgeous sunrise over the Atlantic and the Main Street Pier. The season of fun in Daytona begins with Speed Week in February, culminating with the first race of the season, the Daytona 500 on President's Day weekend. This is considered the Super Bowl of stock car racing, the most prestigious race in NASCAR. A second NASCAR race happens here in the summer at night on July 4th weekend, currently called the Coke Zero 400. This walkway across International Speedway Boulevard connects the Speedway with One Daytona, a modern shopping entertainment district, a gathering spot for visitors and race fans. Victory Circle is the epicenter of entertainment with performances, a live fountain show, and post-race party events. There are two Marriott hotels here, the Fairfield Inn and the Daytona Autograph Collection. See OneDaytona.com for more info. Halfway between the Speedway and the beach is Tuscawilla Park with a large disc golf course, nature trails, playgrounds, and incredible sprawling oak trees. Daytona Beach Zipline Adventure Course is located here, where you can climb, swing, and zipline from tree to tree, as well as play over 40 aerial games. We now head towards the beaches. We are going to start 12 miles to the south in New Smyrna Beach, and then work our way back north. On the Indian River North is the River Deck Marina, where you can rent kayaks and paddle boards or motorized boats. Pontoons available for as little as $300 for four hours. Also the River Deck Restaurant with waterside seating. Next to the River Deck Marina is Riverside Park with walking paths, restrooms, playground, great for fishing. They have this unique round pier with a donut hole for fishing. Pretty cool. At the Marine Discovery Center, you can take boat or kayak eco-tour of the Indian River Lagoon and see a variety of wildlife including bottlenose dolphins and manatees. Several old Florida style shops, boutiques and bed and breakfasts line Flagler Avenue as you approach the beach. We'll check out Flagler Avenue Beach in a bit, but first we're going to start a little further south at 27th Avenue Beachfront Park and then begin heading back north. This is a three and a half acre park with a playground on a modern soft artificial turf and under a shelter for shade. A great idea, that Florida sun can be brutal in the summers. You can also drive on the beach here. Chateau by the Sea has vacation rentals where you can rent for a week or monthly for an extended stay. Taste a wide variety of tacos at Izzy Island Tacos and Ice Cream. And now we head north back to Flagler Avenue Beachfront Park. Mm -hmm. 
This park is a great place to enjoy coffee by the beach. It has a brick courtyard, restroom, showers, and near the village-like shops and restaurants. You can dine at Ocean Breeze Tiki Bar with a second floor deck to enjoy great views of the ocean. For $20, you can drive on the beach. On the other side of Flagler Avenue, the Spring Hill Suites Resort. A mile north of Flagler Avenue Beach is Gracie K. Bark North Beach Park with a wooden walkover to two covered pavilions and beach areas. This park is free. Restrooms on site along with open air showers. Another two miles up the beach is Sand Dunes Park. It is $10 per vehicle to enter. Pets are allowed. Just look at this elevated boardwalk. It goes on for two miles. Handicapped accessible with multiple scenic overlooks. Views of the ocean and Ponce Inlet. On the riverside is a fishing pier. On the other side of the inlet, Lighthouse Point Park with a long jetty that you can walk out on for part of it. There is an observation deck and nature trails. This park is also $10 per vehicle. Dolphins frequent this shoreline, as well as gopher tortoises, raccoons, possums, skunks, armadillos, and birds. A must do when visiting Daytona is the Ponce Inlet Lighthouse and Museum. It is $7 for adults, kids 3 to 11, $2. You can climb to the top of this one, but be aware, at 175 feet, it is the tallest lighthouse in Florida. So a little bit of a climb, but the views are worth it. There are historical artifacts here on the museum grounds. These are some homemade rafts of people fleeing Cuba. Also on the grounds, a nature trail through the mangroves. This Ponce de Leon statue is across the street from the lighthouse at the parking lot for the Hidden Treasures Rum Bar and Grill. A pet friendly chill tiki bar right on the inlet waterway serving steaks, seafood, and pasta. They really have great reviews, known as a local's favorite. Was recommended by a couple of our subscribers. Ponce Inlet is probably where you have the most variety for water sport fun in the Daytona region. Next to Hidden Treasures is Fun Cat Sailing, where you can take a cruise on a 50-foot catamaran. A daytime two-hour swim and sail cruise is $40, or a three-hour sunset cruise $60. At Ponce Inlet Water Sports, you can take a 90-minute dolphin and manatee cruise along the Intracoastal Waterway on a flat-bottom boat for $25 per person. It allows you to sit lower in the water, better views of the dolphins. Or if you really want to see the wildlife up close, rent a kayak or paddleboard. Also available at Ponce Inlet Water Sports. And if you would like to see a great aerial view of the coast, try parasailing from $69 to $89, depending on how high you want to fly. Also near the lighthouse, another cruise, the Manatee with a two hour daytime and sunset cruises. $25 for adults and children 3 to 12, $16. Take an all day or half day fishing charter aboard the Super Critter. You can also learn about marine life at the Marine Science Center with aquariums and educational displays. Currently closed during COVID, but should be opening back up soon. So much to do around Ponce Inlet. We move further up the coast from the inlet. Cars are allowed to drive on the beach here. We will drive on the beach later on, but for now we need to move faster than the 10 miles per hour the beach allows. So we take route A1A. Two miles north of the lighthouse is Winter Haven Park. Another half mile north is Racing North Turn, a historic Florida beach bar restaurant and really kind of a museum as well. It honors the location where the first NASCAR sanctioned stock car and motorcycle racing took place from 1948 to 1958, right on this beach here. As well as great food and drinks, you can see cars and bikes and pictures from some of those early races and dining on a deck with a great oceanfront view. Daytona Beach has two of only six remaining wooden ocean piers still standing on the Atlantic coast. Next to the Ocean Villas condos is the Sunglow Pier, located six miles south of the Main Street Pier. You can grab some coconut shrimp that is out of this world at Krabby Joe's Deck and Grill, located on the pier while enjoying the scenery. 
This part of the coastline is mostly resorts, condos, and vacation rentals. There is the Pirates Island Adventure Golf, but a majority of the entertainment is closer to the Main Street Pier. We are going to hop over the Dunlawton Bridge to Port Orange in South Daytona as we go up along the Halifax River. The Halifax River is part of the Intracoastal Waterway, runs for 25 miles on the west side of the Daytona Beach Peninsula. On the other side of the Dunlawton Bridge is the Port Orange Causeway Park, which is surrounded by water with boat ramps, fishing piers, pavilions, and picnic tables. The Stone Edge Skate Park in South Daytona, known as the best skate park in the region. Daytona Beach's most popular cruise is at the Halifax Harbor Marina, the Lady Dolphin of Daytona. There is a nice large park area here along the Halifax River. Dining Cruise offers a 90-minute cruise for around $35, including taxes and gratuity. It includes dinner, which you can choose the meal, including vegetarian meals available. You also get dessert, unlimited soft drinks, music, and of course great sightseeing as you cruise up the Halifax River. A pretty good deal. The Halifax River Yacht Club can be rented out for weddings and private events. They also have a junior sailing camp where kids 8 to 16 can learn how to sail. On the other side of Orange Avenue and the Veterans Memorial Bridge is the Jackie Robinson Ballpark, where the legendary ball player who broke the color barrier played his first professional game, today home of the Daytona Tortugas. At the base of the Veteran Bridge is a nice wraparound fishing pier. Plenty of parking here at the Volusia County Courthouse. Between the Veterans Bridge and International Speedway Boulevard is City Island Park with a sand volleyball court lighted tennis courts, fishing pier, and a walkway that extends under the International Speedway Bridge. On the other side of International Speedway Boulevard is the new Riverfront Esplanade, being built that will feature promenades, botanical gardens, fountains, ponds, and splash pad. Further up the river, Manatee Island with a nice dog park. On the other side of Main Street Bridge is the Daytona Beach Marina with Caribbean Jack's Restaurant and Bar, a lively hangout with live music and Caribbean-inspired food and drinks. It is here you can board the Howling Owl Boat Tours with a personal sailboat trip, a 90-minute boat tour for $44, or a two-hour sunset cruise is $59. Also here is Cruising Tiki's, where you can sail down the Intracoastal on a floating tiki bar. Next to the Oak Ridge Boulevard Bridge is the Coquina Marina and Crystal Ballroom at Sunset Harbor, a popular wedding venue. Underneath the two spans of the bridge is Sickler Park. This is Riviera Park here. A good place to park and take the bike out for a ride along the Halifax River. The trail goes on for over four miles from Ames Park to Sickler Park. There are just so many nice parks and fishing piers on the west side of the Halifax River. Now let's get back to the beach as we go over the International Speedway Boulevard Bridge. We pick up Route A1A again, a couple of miles south of the Main Street Pier at Congo River Mini Golf with waterfalls, gator feeding, scavenger hunts, and arcade games. One of the nice things about Daytona is that there are plenty of public beach access and parking, unlike Naples and Marco Island. We come now to Sunsplash Park, located 7 tenths of a mile south of the pier, with a splash pad. Parking is easier here, but from this point closer to the pier, parking spaces get a little less convenient. Next to Sunsplash Park, two really good restaurants with oceanfront dining. First, the Land Shark Bar and Grill, a good place for margaritas or cheeseburgers in paradise. I am going to try Krabby's Oceanside next door. Just something light, a creamy crab and spinach dip with tortilla chips. It was really good and hit the spot. Not to mention a nice casual oceanfront dining area. Another advantage about both of these restaurants is they have their own large parking lot. Driving on South Atlantic Avenue, Daytona 2000, a NASCAR themed gift shop. We now approach the pure boardwalk area. 
Screamers Park is where a slingshot propels riders at more than 360 feet, about 100 miles per hour, and a vomitron giving riders a great view at 4 Gs of force. There used to be a Ferris wheel here, but closed down in 2014. On the grounds where the roller coaster once was, is now a parking lot. Parking here is $15 on weekends, or $10 during the week. Or you can park in the parking garage a couple of blocks down, across from the Ocean Shops. Parking in the garage is always $10. Next to the parking garage is the Daytona Lagoon, a seasonal water park and family entertainment center, which includes go-karts, laser tag, a ropes course, mega arcade, rock climbing wall, and mini golf. Also next to the parking garage, a great spot for fast yet healthy food, smoothies, and coffee. The Health Tree Cafe. I tried their kale salad with salmon and brought it to the beach to eat. This is the Fountain of Youth. Oh, Bella wants to say hi. The Main Street Pier is the center landmark of Daytona Beach, built in 1925. The building on it was originally a casino. Now it's Joe's Crab Shack with popular crab buckets and stuffed shrimp, as well as American dishes. Let's take a walk along the boardwalk promenade. The Mardi Gras Fun Center is located on the boardwalk, a beach arcade with classic games and snack bar. The Hilton Daytona Beach is the closest resort to the pier. Behind the Hilton, the historic Daytona Clock Tower. The Daytona Beach Band Shell is where there are free concerts every Friday and Saturday nights, usually from May through October, with a fireworks show at the end of the Saturday night's concert at 9.45 p.m. Next to the Band Shell, Ocean Walk Shops, an open-air shopping mall, connected to the parking garage with a skywalk. There is a movie theater, several eateries, shops. We stayed at the La Quinta Inn a mile north of the pier. It was perfect. Convenient parking right next to your door. Yet a modern room with pool area overlooking the ocean and pet friendly. And a tenth of a mile to a good pizza shop, Captain Pizza. We had a veggie pizza. It was very good. Before we continue to Ormond Beach, want to mention another big event that happens in Daytona every year. Every March, over a half a million people flock to Daytona for the second biggest bike festival in the nation, a 10-day event known as Daytona Bike Week, filled with concerts, bike shows, and street parties. The center of Bike Week is along Main Street. One of the most popular hangouts is the Boot Hill Saloon. And next door, the historic Main Street Station, an old gas station with American grub, rock bands, and outdoor seating. Also, saloons like Dirty Harry's, Froggy's, and the Full Moon Saloon, very popular hangouts. A second big bike festival happens in the fall, Biketoberfest. As well as Main Street, you can find bikers hanging along Beach Street. Beach Street runs along historic downtown Daytona, home to a performing arts complex, a cafe-style movie theater, and a variety of unique shopping with more than 50 shops and restaurants. Daytona is also host to several car shows. The Hangsters Hot Rods and Museum is a car lover's dream. A showroom of restored muscle, classic, and exotic cars, as well as hot rods and motorcycles. It has free parking and admission, open Mondays through Saturdays. Now we go back over the Main Street Bridge, back to the beach, and check out the birthplace of racing, Ormond Beach. Andy 
Romano Beachfront Park is about four miles north of the Daytona Pier. This is probably the nicest beachfront park in the area, with a splash pad, playground, pavilions, concessions. Ormond Beach is nice if you want to just experience the beach setting without the larger crowds. Pure ocean and shoreline. A half mile up the road, Pirate's Cove Adventure Golf with two outdoor courses, multiple streams, caves, and waterfalls. The birthplace of Speed Park, the site in 1903 of a one mile race. The winner driving a car known as the Bullet, an amazing 48 miles per hour. Yeah, if you do 48 miles per hour on I-95 today, you will be endangering your life, being way too slow. But in 1903, it had never been done before. And therefore, Ormond Beach became famous for its sand race course and world speed records. On the grounds, memorials telling the history of this time period. A scaled down replica of the original Ormond garage that would house the drivers and mechanics during the speed time trials. Next to birthplace of Speed Park, the Royal Floridian Resort, an ideal place to lodge and recreate, with a basketball court, mini golf, shuffleboard, and pool right on the ocean deck. Okay, enough with Atlantic Boulevard. We want a better view of the ocean. So we'll pay the $20 to ride along the beach. The $20 allows you to leave and re-enter one time. Max speed is 10 miles per hour. As you go further north, the peninsula gets narrower to Ormond by the sea. Another 45 miles, St. Augustine, which you can see in our previous video. We are gonna jump back over the Halifax River and head to Tomoka State Park. On the east side of the river, Fortunato Park, with a launching area for non-motorized boats, fishing piers, picnic tables with barbecue grills and playground. On the west side of the river, Granada Pier, a nice long wraparound wooded pier at Casson Park. Bailey River Bridge Gardens located here. A scenic drive along the Halifax River on North Beach Street. Tomoka State Park is a three square mile park where you can experience Florida nature and wildlife. Sprawling oak trees. You can see trees here that are centuries old. At Tomoka Outpost, you can rent a single kayak. $20 for first hour, $8 for additional hours, or a double kayak for $28 first hour and $13 additional hours. Canoes available as well. You can also take a guided tour on a pontoon boat. There is camping as well at Tomoka State Park. So in summary, the world's most famous beach? Well, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but there is something for everyone within the 23 miles of the fun coast. I found Daytona's coastline to be very accessible to the public. Would like to see a Ferris wheel or roller coaster return to the pier area. The skyline needs a little more there. What do you think? We have added addresses and links to help you plan your Daytona Beach getaway. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We shoot travel promos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Next week, thanks to the GOAT, we go back to our home turf on the other end of I-4 and do a video on Tampa Bay. After that, we continue down Florida's East Coast to the Space Coast. From Daytona Beach and the Fun Coast, thank you for watching and blessings to you wherever you may be.